Yes. Her name is Lisa Maley. She is now involved with Lisa Maley Seminars, but she was the founder of Lisa Maley Image Modeling and Acting in Orlando. And she's joining us today to talk about how you can recharge and re-energize your job search. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us today. Michelle, thank you for having me. I love your program. I love the whole idea of your station, and I wish you much success. And, yes, I'm really excited to be here because we want everybody who is job hunting. You might be unemployed. You might be a recent graduate. You might have recently been downsized. (laughs) If you would like some inspiration when it comes to your employment search, we want you to know about the job fair, the free job fair that's happening this Monday, June 28th, at the Amway Arena from 8 until 2. There are going to be lots of on-site employers. However, Christian Help and Paulette Weir from the Central Florida Employment Council has arranged, have arranged 18 free seminars for attendees all day long. So starting at 8 o'clock and running till 1.30 that afternoon, there will be three sessions presented simultaneously about networking, creating a job plan, how to work a job fair. I'm going to be making presentations at 11.30, 12.30 and 1.30 on professional image and power interviewing. So if any of your listeners want motivation or inspiration, we'd like them to come out and join us this next Monday. Again, it's free. You don't have to make a reservation. <laughs> yeah, how does that work? And, and, you just show up? Yeah, you just show up. Now, you'd want to show up looking great and bring lots of resumes because no telling who you're going to be able to network with who could hire you down the road. But particularly if you're feeling a little depressed or if interviewing isn't your favorite activity, you know, most people who I coach privately or sometimes I'll do classes on interviewing. Today I'm here at Embry-Riddle University because I teach for Flight Attendant Express, and they are the least expensive, most successful flight attendant school in the nation. We have people fly in from all over the world to take their flight attendant class. And whenever I'm teaching for them, I hear same things I teach from my individual clients that I hear, and that is, what if you don't have the experience? Mm-hmm. You know, How can you go for an interview if you don't have the experience? And we want to tell everyone that if experience were the most important factor, you wouldn't even have to show up at the interview. You would just email your resume in, and they would pick the resume with the most experience. You know, that's really true. I never thought about that. It is, and I find that the biggest mistake most people make when they're interviewing is not taking the time to be prepared or not practicing. And it is kind of interesting when you think most folks wouldn't show up at a golf or a tennis match to compete without practicing, but we could go to an interview that would change our lives and not be the least bit prepared, where it's pretty unrealistic to expect that you would think of your most effective and strongest answers just uh, off the top of your head when you're nervous. (laughs) <laughs> That's true. So are these some of the some of the tips that you're going over in the seminars is how to prepare and how to practice? Absolutely. We're going to I'm speaking for 45 minutes three times again at the arena on Monday, 11:30, 12:30 and 1:30 and we're going to discuss professional image. So first of all, how can you walk in and so look the part that the interviewer would be excited about your presence and not want you to go to the competition? So by the way you look like, your image, that first impression Within four seconds, somebody usually decides if they want you to be a part of their team or not. And then, of course, the way you sell yourself has to directly match what the employers need. And that's probably one of the biggest mistakes that I see. For example, when you're hit with that all-important question at the beginning, tell me about yourself, Mm -hmm. you mentioned that I had owned Lisa Maley Image Modeling and Acting, and I did that for 22 years. In fact, I sold my school in 2004, and then I resigned all participation there three years ago. So if anybody wanted to reach me, please don't call me at the school. Just contact lisamaleyseminars.com. But the reason why I'm telling you this story is I interviewed so many people when I needed employees for the school. And I remember interviewing a young lady and asking her at the beginning, why don't you start off by telling me about yourself? And Michelle, she actually looked me in the eye and she said, well, like, um, I want you to know that my favorite band is U2, and on the weekends, I go horseback riding. <laughs> that was her answer, and she expected to be hired off of that response. And I'm sure she was thinking, well, that's honest. I really do like U2, and I go horseback riding. <laughs> but you have to define yourself in terms of the employer's needs. So you think about what are they looking for, and then you have to match what they need. For example, here at the Embry-Riddle Orlando campus, where I work for Flight Attendant Express, they know that safety is an incredibly important component for a flight attendant. Mm -hmm. So it's smart for anybody interviewing in that regard to stress 
how safety oriented they are and that they understand health and they pay great attention to detail. But see, it's not enough just to use those words because mm -hmm. if somebody says to me, well, Lisa, tell me about yourself. And I say, I'm professional, I'm dedicated, I'm hardworking, I'm a team player, I'm a self-starter. If you just give them words, by the time they get to the next question, they'll forget them, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, you need to, to attach a story to it. Exactly, because people forget lists, and that's why we all have to make a list when we go to the grocery store, because it's impossible to remember words. So when you're looking for the job to apply for, a lot of jobs mm -hmm. on, online, they have a list of requirements and then a list of special skills. So as mm -hmm. part of your prep work, do you try to tie those skills into a story, you know, an example at your last job where you used these skills? Absolutely, because in thinking about it logically, the only reassurance that the interviewer has that you're going to perform effectively for them is for you to share what you've already done in the past. That's the evidence, my experience. And that's why, in effect, people who have done volunteer work can sell really good stories when they're in interviews as well, because it's not about how much you got paid for it. It's about what you've accustomed to doing and what your work ethic is. So it's critical to make a list of what the interviewer is looking for and then go in prepared to tell stories about how you possess the qualities that they need because we're looking for a direct match. You know, the interviewer is only sitting there thinking, what's in it for me? Mm -hmm. Is this person going to work out for me? And, of course, all interviewers are interested in eliminating most of the people who they're interviewing because they want the very top candidate. So you can't present any negatives in your interview. Everything's got to be positive and upbeat. Now, what happens if, you, if you're sitting in the interview and you know that you messed up? Is there a way that you can redeem yourself? Absolutely. And it's important to have practiced so much beforehand that you have identified your talking points before you walk in. Essentially, Michelle, it's the difference between being active and passive. I was once interviewing a young man who... Um, Actually, I had coached years prior, and then he wanted to work for us. Mm -hmm. So I asked him about his success on the football team because I noticed that he had gone to state the year before, but he didn't win. And he was smart enough to come back to me and say, you know what, I really loved being on Winter Park High School's team. I learned so much about teamwork. We gave it our all. We didn't win, but that's not what I was the proudest of in high school. He said, what I was the most proud of is that I started my senior year with a 2.9 GPA, and I decided I was going to raise it, and I raised it up to a 3.6 on top of playing football. Uh -huh. That is actively controlling the interview in a really subtle yet pre-planned way so that he could give the impression that not only was he a hard worker on the football field, but he would work hard if I hired him too. That is a fantastic answer. It really is. And see, basically, when you go into an interview, when I'm coaching individuals, and I do a lot of private coaching, we videotape, it's all about have you decided beforehand what you want to share about your skills defining it in terms of what they need. Essentially, to me, good interviewing is just like talking to the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. You never really answer their questions. You just <laughs> tell them what you want them to know. <laughs> that and so that's true. why, you know, I coach a lot of pageant girls, too. That's why in pageants they call the interview the personality competition because usually if you're sitting in front of a future employer, usually they've seen your resume mm -hmm. and they're impressed with what you've done professionally. But now it comes down to do they like you? Now it comes down to what do you look like and what's your attitude? Do you come off as upbeat and friendly and enthusiastic? Because we know these attitudes are contagious. And I coach an awful lot of people who are, let's say, 50-plus who are looking for work. And sometimes they'll complain to me, well, Lisa, you know, there's discrimination out there. Nobody's hiring me because I'm old. And really what it comes down to, because I'm always super honest with people, it comes down to, no, you're not old, but you might be slow. And no one's going to hire you if you're slow. And we know slow comes in lots of different ages. There are lots of teenagers I know who like to sleep in until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's <laughs> slow. But the reason why the confidence and the energy that you portray in your interview, the enthusiasm that you bring to the interview is so critical, is because the interviewer is thinking, well, this is you on your best day. So if you don't look like you're ready to jump in and go to work and have that happy, positive, upbeat attitude on that day, mm -hmm. why would they want you to go in there every day? 